Today's topic is subscribers, questions, and answers. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome once again to Waypan. Yeah. And I'm Sunny. Our first question is by Smock TV. Thank you for all your content. It's very helpful. Keep going. Thank you very much for that. Comments like this is what keeps us going, but we'll take that as a comment, not so much as a question. <laughs> yeah, I guess you're right on that. Next question. It's from Mr. Fire Magnet. Would you do some more common miniature painting content, like painting mini tutorial? We have actually done some more standard miniature content where we show how you paint certain things. For example, we did motivation in action, which was... Yeah, the cargo boxes from the Into the Dark box. That's correct. And we went through a variety of techniques that you could use to paint them up. So it wasn't just one technique. Now that is just terrain and it was very basic. However, we've also done stuff like how to make your own washes, how to get all the to our basing material you'll ever need. Yeah, the sand, all the sand you will ever need. Yeah. How to make your own light box. We even did in the Bellacore video, Bellacore and Laura. Yeah, yeah, like no. That. In the Bellacore one, we actually did a standardized tutorial one and all of these have been some of our least successful videos and that's how we don't do things again if people don't, don't watch, watch them. them. Yep, and that's basically the story I think for most YouTubers. If people don't watch your stuff, you don't make that stuff again. Yep, exactly. So I guess to answer the question, no, we probably will not be doing more tutorial Yeah, we content. won't be doing more and we have done it. Yeah, yeah, we have. All right. Let's go to the next question. It's from the Mad Monkey 13 YouTube. I absolutely love listening to you guys. I especially love the episodes when you two talk about life and give honest thoughts about topics, such as the episode on how girls view guys who play Warhammer. Are you guys planning on doing more episodes like that in the near future? Also, how and why did Cal start doing YouTube and how did Sunny end up doing it with him? I would also be very interested in watching some longer, uncut videos of you two just painting and explaining the process as you go. Is this a possibility? Okay, so this is actually quite a saga. Well, how I started was originally I had a thread on a website and it was named Waypan. Well, what are you painting now? Yes, yes, it was. And it was designed to encourage people to paint. It was about what are you painting now exactly, right? And we have a Facebook group now that has replaced that and we continue to do reviews in that way. However, how I started this was I used to give comments to everybody in that group and I would describe the images and I'd I'd give these very long detailed comments and at one point I was like I am spending four or five hours just writing replies to all of this stuff like originally I just wrote when somebody replied and look this was a very, very successful thread. In fact, I reopened it some years later because I had paused my miniature painting. And each time I made this thread, well, it kind of broke the website. It got so large. It was larger than any other thread. And like people loved it. People absolutely loved it. So I thought it was my responsibility to actually keep that going. And you moved on to live streaming the commentary after that, didn't you? Well, I think originally I just recorded it, but then I think I moved on to live streaming at some point. And this was one of our first YouTube lessons. So we used to do these reviews on this channel every week. But after a while, they became our least viewed content. And unfortunately, YouTube only wants you to do one thing. So we did a live stream on this very channel where we had to hide all that content because essentially we couldn't keep it up because YouTube would punish us because you guys would come along and be like, what's this? And of course, that's natural. You guys are going to go, oh, this is something different. And when you guys went back and you didn't watch that, YouTube said, this is not a channel to recommend. Uh, albeit it was like an hour, two hour long video. Video because, yeah, yeah, yeah no, like I, I'm not saying that the people who clicked away did anything wrong. I'm saying that YouTube punishes us for that. Yeah, which is why we create a dedicated channel called Waypan Reviews, Pan Reviews just for the live stream content of this. Yeah, we didn't stop doing yeah, it. Yeah, we didn't stop doing it. But that was one of the things that we It did. was one of our lessons we had to learn. Another reason why we started YouTube together 
was to get the ball rolling on your commission service, get a bit more eyes on it. And, yeah, but yeah. unfortunately, because of the way that we did things, so they'd usually pop up in the reviews a lot, but in our scripted content, we didn't really have the uh, reason to show them. So a lot of the time, it's like, well, well why would we add this? Because mm. it has nothing to do with the topic we're yeah, talking yeah, about. Yeah, that makes sense. And eventually, I ended up pushing Sunny to the point where she would start making videos more than once a month <laughs> yeah so then we moved on to once a week which we're still doing now yes well we went to uh once a fortnight i really had to oh, push yeah, you did, to get did. you there and uh then i'm like you know it's really only going to be successful if we get it to once a week and yeah now we're at once a week yeah and yeah. like that's where we've had more success but some people have suggested that maybe we should go to bigger breaks and make longer content well yeah, I guess we have been also doing a bit of longer content, like with the design versus law stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's been pretty popular, that video, which is great. And we like that apparently you, some people have said that it's very unique. They don't see design versus law anywhere else. Yeah, they call it, uh, what do you, um, secondary law content, where oh. you're actually not just reading the law, because a lot of the time uh, with the primary law content, mm. it's just like, here's the law. And we're like, well, no, let's actually take a, a bit of a deeper look. Yeah, and plus we're artists ourselves and I'm a designer, so it kind of feels like it defeats the purpose if we don't try to bring that a bit yeah. into the into yeah. the topic. So we ended up actually doing more of the exact thing you asked for, which was our Valentine's Day episode, yep. where we sort of talked about how to get your other half, you know, your husband, wife, girlfriend, whatever, mm. into the hobby. And the thing is, unfortunately, we did a poll where we asked, why did you subscribe? And apparently only 3% of people, I think currently, is uh, where it is at, subscribed for the reason that you stated, those sorts of videos. Yeah, content that apparently is pretty broad, like we do cover topics that well, are... Well, colour theory is king still, yeah, apparently. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and I'm, I'm sorry, guys, but colour theory is kind of a five-point topic. <laughs> yeah, but I think what they want us to do is go more in depth on some of the things that they've seen mm, yes and explain it unfortunately for the part with the painting sessions we are not the most well off at the moment yeah to and, have a... and with that you're going to need a dedicated space and you're going to need recording equipment you're going to need a setup beyond what we have you might remember that our audio was lacking for a long time and that's yeah. because we didn't have a space that we could sort of set up and it took a bit more to set up than we would have liked. Yeah, so it's going to be a similar situation if we were going to do painting sessions to have, you know, camcorders or, yeah. or like arms and things. Because like obviously we can't be painting and holding a camera at the same yeah, yeah, time yeah. and, we, you know, we, computer setups and all that. Yeah, exactly. So essentially we need YouTube to be more successful and we just need to be more successful in general to be able to set that up. So to answer the question, we probably won't be doing that for the time being. So I think we've covered all we can with that question. I mean, we, we spend a lot of time on that one question, yeah? Yeah, well, the next one is from Birdie084 and he asks, Art question, how can you create more vibrant and colourful shadows on your models? That's pretty easy. You just have to underpaint with colour. Yeah, so for example, if you're doing skin, you might want to do a purple undercoat and that will give you a more vibrant shadows. Or green. Green, you know, yeah, is yeah. Uh, really good. A lot of painters do that. Like Genuine Vision does a green for uh, more reddish faces, more Anglo faces. Yes. Yeah, so using colored bases, uh, base coats or base prime will help with that essentially. Yeah. All right, so I think it's time for the next question. Veek Leak 7535 says, What would you rather fight? Hundred duck sized Angrons or one Angron sized duck. I would definitely prefer to fight one Angron sized duck. Weapons are a thing and uh that would be a pretty easy thing and uh well let's just say we'd be eating Chinese for some time. Plus, like Angron's pretty big. I don't think I wanna be fighting a hundred Angron sized ducks. No, no, ducks. he's he's saying like a hundred duck sized Angrons. Are and duck -sized see Angrons? And, and oh. I wouldn't want that either because I believe that when Angron was a child he was attacked by the Eldar because of all of their prophecy nonsense. 
and he still pants all of them. Yeah. So yeah. just uh, I I just, do not just want the one duck. Thank yeah, I just you. don't want to fight Angron. Thanks. Okay. Okay. Bye bye. Next question. Kukes says, "Have you considered doing streams like painting session streams or just talking, discussing some topics?" Yeah, I think we pretty much answered this one. Except for the discussion part, so I guess the closest that we come to that is with our waypan reviews, where、yeah. we talk about、uh, what people have painted, and we we generally have a bit of banner, but mostly we just keep it on the painting stuff. And if we get lucky and have a guest on, yeah, we really enjoy having guests from our community and just having a chat, just some banter. Yeah, and usually at the very end of the review, we would ask them a question like, you know, what do you think is an issue? For Facing the hobby today, and they will say something. Then we further have discussions on that afterwards. Yeah. But so that would be the closest that we do. It is a live stream, and that would be the closest to the live stream and discussions and quote unquote painting. Yeah. Some people have said, you know, we should put it on Twitch. But look, we we're just so busy at the moment that we haven't had time to do that sort of stuff. We need to get ahead on this channel before we start looking into other things. Yeah. Next we have Lemon Gambit. What are your thoughts on using colors? Temperature underpainting rather than a white or black zenithal or value or volume painting. A good channel covering the topic and one of my new favorite channels, along with yours, I recently stumbled across is G R G Miniatures. I've really enjoyed the effect of playing with hue shifts and temperatures as my zenithal rather than just value. And what are your thoughts on techniques like limited palettes or color gamuts and or mother colors? How would you apply your videos on color theory and psychology to help select a limited palette? As an additional note, I love that you share perspectives from Hindu and Buddhist culture along. With color theory, I think many videos present the default Western slash Western European theory and psychology as if it were accepted truth rather than just a default for their local culture. So here's a bit of a secret view into our back end. We have a whole lot of topics that we're trying to cover, and one of our ones that we really want to do, but It will take a lot of time and effort to get done. Is our ultimate guide to underpainting right? And for that one, we do have plans to cover what you've mentioned here about undercoloring and all that. Yeah, as an example, we've already been testing out some of these things. This is a part of what we do. We'll do research before we actually get to the topic. So one of the things that Sunny wanted to try was doing brown underpainting rather than doing the neutral blacks and greys. Yeah. And what this does is that it helps to give you more warmer, vibrant colors yeah, when you layer still, over. Yeah, and it's still neutral. But... Yeah, and what I really loved about this was that it's great for when you have blonde hair, and it's great for when you want to do skins as well. It it just layers very nicely because of the browns. Well, I think it's uh, it's a different way of going about things, and if it works for you, it works. That's the biggest thing. Yeah, it's all about experimentation, but we will be covering. It in this video that we plan to do now onto the limited palette part. I used to regularly update my website blog, and I'd talk about a variety of things. And one of the things that I did talk about was mother colors and using a mother color palette when we were doing the ink models.、Mm, we were, but we ended up scaling back on the website because, well, YouTube just got more success. And, yeah.、Uh, We also had a friend who commented that we wrote an article on the exact same thing that they were asking about before, and then we did a video on it, and they're like, "Oh, I understood the video," and I, I had the distinct feeling they may not have read the article. Well, I think it's also easier for a few people to just, you know, watch a video, yeah, listen, yeah, that's true, that's listen true. and look at visuals. It's always one of the easiest ways to learn. It's yeah, not- I agree. Always the way to learn. Different people have different ways of learning, but that's why I think、um, the larger audience they、yeah. like watching video tutorials. Makes <laughs> sense. Yeah. So we just cover things on YouTube now. Yeah, pretty much. But if you are interested in the article that we did on the mother color, we'll link it in the description below. And I think what you've mentioned about that topic in relation to color theory and psychology is actually a pretty interesting idea, and we might explore that in the future as a video topic. And the final bit on your comment is, as an additional note, I love that you share perspectives from Hindu and Buddhist culture along with color theory. 
I think many videos present the default Western slash Western European theory and psychology as if it were accepted truth rather than just a default for their local culture. So one of the things that we made very clear in in-depth color psychology is that there's a distinction between cross-cultural or biological factors and cultural factors. Our goal here is to give you the most information possible in the shortest period of time. Time is the currency of life and we aim to treat it as if it is valuable, that your time is valuable. As an example, if you've clicked on this video, you haven't clicked on it because it's a tutorial. You've clicked on it because you want to be entertained. You want to have something in the background, whatever it is, right? But we aim to respect that. So some of the times we may not cover everything that you would like us to, but we are trying to be concise and accurate with our information. And we think it's important to cover things as fully as we can within that. And part of that is with psychology, there is both biological factors, cultural factors and personal factors. But we can't so much do the personal stuff because that would waste the aforementioned time that we were talking about. Exactly. Next, we have Speak Tome 4778. Okay, I have a bunch of ideas for what I'd like to hear in your 10k subscriber video. Not really a question, but it would be great to hear more about your backgrounds and how you two met. It has been covered in bits and pieces in your videos and the comments, but it would be nice to have the full narrative in one place. Your videos have given me the impression that Cal convinced Sunny to try mini painting and wargaming. Is that accurate? And how did that happen? Did Cal draw the line and say, if you love me, you have to love minis too, winky face. <laughs> also, what topics would you like to cover if the algorithm didn't have you so locked into Warhammer? And maybe on a related note, what are your favorite miniature games outside of Warhammer? What did you struggle with the most when you started painting minis? What do you struggle with now? Can't wait for the video. Hope Cal is feeling back to his old self by then. All right, if you're looking for the saga of how we got together, I'm sorry, but we haven't sold that script to Bollywood quite yet. Yeah. So, oh, it is it is a long story, and I'm not sure that this video has time for it. But long story short, I got introduced to Cal's gaming server from a mutual friend of ours, and everything else is the end of story there <laughs> that is not the end of the story that's barely the beginning well that's just how we met essentially and um i was always interested in dungeons and dragons or role play type games which is mm -hmm, how i mm -hmm. got to be introduced into this realm and then cal showed me pictures of his paint jobs and i was like no freaking way I think it was the particular one where I did the Facebook, where it was the one where I had my thumb next to the miniature, and you're like, wait, no, what? Because I saw the minis, they were so colourful, they were very nicely painted, and I was just like, wow, you have some serious talent. And then he showed me the thumb next to the mini, and I'm like, okay, that is next level talent then, because I that was my first time ever seeing mini painting, and mm. I was like, this is friggin' insane. And then he tells me he doesn't use any special glasses. It's just 2020 vision on the models. Yeah, but now and, that uh, I'm doing it more professionally, I do use the glasses when I'm usually doing character level stuff. Yeah, for, but I mean, that is also because you're doing it for a customer. But like, you know, your, 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 your regular models, you don't usually use them. No, no. And, and they still turn out really nice. I shouldn't be painting in the living room because uh, it's got terrible light, but some of the times I do. Don't yeah, I? well, it's, it's easy because the TV's there and we can put something on and, and, and then we can watch and do the Yeah, that's when we're doing painting. our stuff, yeah, mostly. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't think we have time to go into the arranged marriage saga mm. and all of the other nonsense. Yes, so. so we'll just move on to the part where you say, what topics would you like to cover if the algorithm didn't have you so locked into Warhammer. I think if the algorithm wasn't so punishing, it's like make videos every week, make videos in a very sort of specific way. I think what we would probably do is some of our more successful videos because they take time to create. And if you would like us to do that, there's one way you can guarantee that, and that's by becoming a member. That is how we feel safe 
spending time doing bigger projects. So for example, the in-depth color psychology, the color harmony stuff, all of this sort of thing where we spent a lot of time researching, we spent a lot of time scripting things out. That is some of the stuff that we'd like to do more. Just more educational stuff. Well, I think he's talking about what games we might cover outside of Warhammer. And if we had the choice, we'd talk more about Frostgrave and Stargrave because we've done videos of that in the past. And in fact, color psychology wise, the latest one that we did was covering D&D classes. And these are videos that unfortunately do not get the views for some reason. Yeah, yeah, it was it was very unfortunate because we thought that uh, that was something that was really interesting, like communicating alignment through color theory. Yeah, and it was one of our surefire topics, right? Because people just want the color theory stuff. Yep, so I'm like, yep. okay, so we've we've kind of dra drained the well with the Warhammer part. Why not we try? you know, a different game like Dungeons and Dragons. That's pretty popular too. And then we did that and then pretty much no traction. Yeah, and see, that's one of the things, like we said before, if we don't get traction on a topic, we're likely not to do it. Yeah, so we would love to cover more things like Frostgrave, Stargrave, Ankh even. These are topics that uh, some some YouTubers have covered, but they're very small topics, yep, yep. very small. But it is it is things that we'd love to talk about because we do know that a lot of you guys do you talk about how like, hey, why why not cover other games? Why not talk about other things? And I'm just like, we we like to, but you know, but nobody looking, nobody watch. Yeah, I think it's just that nobody will pick it up, so we don't. Do yeah, because you have to remember that we do put a lot of effort. It takes a lot of time to produce these oh, things. Oh, just an insane amount of effort because we're not just a slideshow. Like one person in one of the comments we're going to said that we're like a slideshow. And essentially, like that kind of awoken something in me because I'm like, no, we're not just a slideshow. We don't just put up a single image and drag across it. No, we really, really try hard to get images and video that correspond to the topic that help you click to understand it. That's one of our key things. And I'm just like, we really put a tremendous amount of effort into these. Yeah. So if videos don't get watched, it's just, it just tells us that we're not being rewarded for that effort. So don't invest time into that. Yes. Because just one thing when it comes to creating these videos. So for about each minute of content that you're watching, not this one, because we have deliberately not done too much with this one, but for each usual scripted video that we're doing for each minute of video that you are watching, we have spent two hours of time producing it. As time goes on, I have gotten quicker with my video editing skills. So you would be looking at about 10 to 20 hours worth of work for a 10 minute video. And with the longer ones like the design versus law where we have 40 minutes, you're looking at 40 to 50 hours worth of work. Sometimes more, but yes, yeah, like that's that's the issue because we really do try and put a lot into the visuals. So the next part is, what did you struggle with the most when you started painting minis? What do you struggle with now? I think when I started painting minis, I struggled with just about everything. And I think that's one of the reasons why it was successful, why this was successful. Originally, when I was doing the what are you painting now uh, thread was because people just saw that I was just going for it. Like I wasn't the greatest painter ever. I'm just like, yeah, here's stuff. Yeah, here's stuff. And I guess it just doesn't make someone feel intimidated or shy to get feedback when they're like at the same level as you or... And I think it's really important that people see the process. Yeah, the process is the most important. For me, I I actually still struggle with contrast paint, even though I am, you know, I've been working with it for a while now and I think I've gotten better control. But I mentioned this to Cal the other day. It's like working with soapy water because sometimes, yeah. sometimes you just try to get it to move around and then it starts creating bubbles. And I'm just like, uh, okay, just chill, chill out contrast paint. Just well, I think the reason is, is because you're looking for a level of control that a lot of other painters who don't use, uh, sorry, who do use contrast aren't looking for. They're just trying to get things like one and done. Yeah. And you're just like, 
I want contrast to do the thing that it said that it can do. Yeah, and I, I'm trying to control the pooling, I'm the streaking, I'm trying to make sure that doesn't come through. Mm, mm. And then also, I'm still struggling with, uh, I, weirdly enough, true metallic metal. Well, you seem to do a lot of non metallic metal, and when I see you do it with the steel, I'm just like, ugh. But like, my non, sorry, my true metallic metal steel is still bad. My true metallic metal. Gold is great; it's fantastic, but not so much the steel. Right, I think steel for some reason is a, a bit harder to do. I think it's because the way that you do steel isn't actually real. Yeah, well, I don't know. Well, you know, we'll like the we'll hyper reality stuff that、yeah. we were talking about.、Yeah. And then he does mention, "Can't wait for the video. Hope Cal is feeling back to his old self by then." Yeah, and、uh, unfortunately, I was sick for a month because、uh, for the first three weeks I was bad, and then I got better, and then I got the same sickness again. Yeah, well, you can see the proof, you guys. He、yeah. doesn't sound like a choo-choo train anymore. Or, or Batman. Batman, or even a, a broken muffler. Yeah. These are the kinds of things that I deal with every day. Next, we have user with numbers because there's too many numbers in his username. Where possible, or it makes sense, could you include practical examples of how to apply some of the painting techniques slash methods you discuss to a model by showing you paint this on an actual model? So I'm not asking for full-blown tutorials on how to paint a model. I'm simply talking about focusing on demonstrating how the topic you discussed would be practically applied or achieved. So one of the reasons why we use other people's paint jobs is because we're like, this is a person who has achieved it perfectly, right?、Mm. And often we do actually show pictures from myself and my painting, but we don't actually label it when it's my stuff because. We're we're not attributing it to anyone because it's ours. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but the thing is,、uh, as we mentioned in one of the previous comments, like it's also a matter of setup. And yeah, yeah. In the filming quality, I do use my phone, and I find that photo wise. My phone is great; takes pretty high resolution pictures. But video wise, it becomes pretty grainy. It's not the best. But we do actually use those photos, as we said. So, for example, in the upcoming video, we've got two examples from myself. One's from Monster Hunter World, and the others about ah forty k walls. Are yeah, kill team I- into、terrain. the dark. Yeah. Yeah. So, as mentioned, as a response to some of the previous comments, once we get a better setup in the future. We will be able to make painting videos. Yeah, in this one, you might have actually heard some of the crickets come through, despite all of the freaking Duna coverage that we have done yeah, to pad、so、the walls. Yeah, so we're we're trying our best to give you guys the best quality content that we can. But、and、we just have to do it within our current means. Yes,、yeah. within our means is the biggest thing. Next, we have Shock Acolyte. Is there a big hobby community in Australia? I'm in the US. Is 40k the most popular there, or is it something else like Frostgrave? What games or faction do either of you most enjoy? I would say the Games Workshop dominates, but I'm not quite sure that it's 40k that it's the most popular. I think some of the 40k derivatives like Kill Team、mm. might be more popular than that. I think. For a lot of people, they just don't have time to learn the full army stuff or the time to make full armies anymore. Yeah, exactly. Which is why they're moving more towards miniature agnostic games as well, like Frostgrave. But at the local hobby store with us, it seems that the scene is. They have Flesh and Blood. That's quite popular as well. Dungeons and Dragons. Flesh and Blood is a card game as compared to the others that we have mentioned here. But these are just things that we have seen is popular with our local scene.、Mm. There are quite a few card games that are popular, but Flesh and Blood, I would say, is one of the big up and comers at the moment. But I wouldn't say that the hobby community is that big in Australia. It's pretty niche because we've got surfing and sports and all of these other outdoor activities, which people can partake in quite easily due to our nice weather. Kukas says, "Will you show us your pretty faces? Also, do you have other hobbies outside of the miniature war games hobby or even nerd stuff in general?" If you follow the links that we provide in every single video, you can see our pretty faces elsewhere. But no, we don't have a camera set up just yet. Same as before, how we said we don't have the best setup, and we've got to be within our means. Yeah, and as for other hobbies, I do enjoy doing illustrations, and one of my passions is doing 
watercolor cards for my friends and um, you know I do like painting and drawing and things but it's very much my same mindset that I have with the hobby it has to have a purpose so I don't really like doing drawing unless there is a purpose to it like example making greeting cards during seasonal times or if I'm going to create patterns for fabric or something like that but I'm not too sure about Cal if he's got any other hobbies well, I would say, you know, role-playing games, which is well within this sphere, I guess. But also, I'm a big movie buff. I'm a big... Uh, I very much enjoy anime, is mm-hmm. what I should say. I've watched so much more anime since you showed me so many of your collection. Yeah, yeah. Um, And uh, I'm just a bit of a media sponge in general. I'll enjoy comics, books, whatever. Just media. I just love consuming you know, information and stories. Next question. We have Ella Terza. I'm sorry if I said that wrong. Uh, video question. Do you write scripts for your videos? General question. How are you doing? Cheers from Italy. So with uh, these videos, it will very much depend on the video. But often what we will have is we'll have dot points that we want to hit so that we can have our more naturalistic conversations that we have that people have said that they very much enjoy. But some of the times, especially with the much more focused things like the in-depth color psychology, it is completely scripted. Yeah, because those we need to really hit specific points and very concisely and quickly. And we would waste a lot of time doing a lot of retakes if we end up rambling on a bit too long about yeah, a, one Yeah, I would agree point. with that. And the issue is, is like, it's so information dense so that we, we can't just have those natural conversations. We just have to script it and say, here's the information. Da, 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 da. Yeah, but uh, things like our design versus law stuff, that's a bit more casual. But I will still take a look at the artwork and have rough dot points ahead of time so yeah, that yeah. I can say it like I'll remember what I have to say and then I'll say it naturally on the on the recording itself and that's it from the questions which came from that video there is one other question that's back there and if you really want to hear the answer to that question well we'll need to get enough members and it will only be in the members section because that one is a bit spicier However, this leads us into our next part, which is, unfortunately, YouTube has been playing a little bit of funny buggers with us, and what that means is that we only had 300 views on this video. Yeah. So we had just hit 10,000 subscribers, and we were really surprised to see that our 10k video only got 300 views. Yeah, we were expecting a bit more response from it. And unfortunately, YouTube has continued with this problem and we have done everything we can to sort of make sure that we get those notifications out there. But only once we made a post about how we weren't really getting views and what have we done wrong, which is a post that we actually want to comment on, Because you guys gave us a lot of feedback on what you guys like. So this post was in response to Nostalgia is a Strange Fuel. And we only had 300 views at that time. And we were thinking, what have we done wrong? How can we fix this? And then we put up that post and we changed the category of it. And it did seem to change things just slightly. Yeah, because we thought that was a pretty good topic that people would be interested in or have a lot to say about. And after changing the category, we were flooded with in the comments. Well, see, a lot of the comments that we got in there afterwards were like, I didn't get notifications for this until that post. When yeah, you- so I'm guessing that the video didn't show up in your home feed. And maybe you did get the notification, but it just sometimes... We don't know what happens a lot of the time. Yeah. Yeah. So we wanted to answer some of the questions and comments from that post as well in this, because we think that that's very much the same sort of deal as the questions. But this one actually got launched out to more people. So we think that it will... It will be fair to cover this poll and the questions you guys or feedback that you have shared. Yeah. All right. Well, first, let's get to the poll then. Now, first, we really want your comments on this poll, because if you are watching this far in, you're somebody who's going to keep coming back and keep watching our content. You are the people who we are chasing. 
the people who actually watch all the way through. Why did you subscribe? Broad tutorials, reading color, understanding hyperreality, 18%. Color theory slash psychology, 37%. Design breakdowns, design versus law, meaningful, marine, so on, 15%. Broad topic conversations, GW pricing, girlfriends, motivational, 4%. All of it, 27%. Bob the Builder 12 says, I subbed because I love everything about your videos. Thank you very much. And we like the emojis. They're very fun. Yeah, this one's pretty cute with the little swirly cheeks. Mm. And then next we have SWAT Drama. I'd say the first three choices, but I can only pick one. Hope you guys don't burn out on this, so take your time. The law of 40k alone can be a quagmire of insanity. We're not the type to burn out. However, what we don't like doing is bashing our head against the wall. And that seems to be our biggest issue at the moment, which is where we try and produce quality content, but we can't get it to you guys. Yeah, so it's not that we, not that we can ever not burn out, but it's like we're putting in a lot of effort, but it's not reaching out to the people who have subscribed or other people who are interested in the topic. And we're like, what is going on? Why is this happening? Yes, so it's more about... If we keep getting results, we'll just keep Keep going. going, Yeah. Next, we have Verbuchter. I'll I'll read the name. No, I won't. (laughs) I read your name and thought, wow, he's interested in what I am currently painting and subbed without second thought. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Thanks. From Marcus Jack Dishcraft. He says, you stress out too much over it. Sub feeds are flooded. Some people keep long watch lists. It's not always about your work. Sometimes it's your audience. Yeah, and uh, I had a bit of a conversation here. And essentially what I said is we don't want to be the kind of people who blame our audience. That I I don't think that's going to lead to anything healthy. And also at this point in time, that particular video only had 300 views. And we had had that happen with the video where we put out the questions for this. Yeah. So we were like, no, no, with this, this is an issue. We have to fix this. Yeah. We can accept it if it is 10% of our subscribers, but it was 3% of our subscribers. That's definitely a cause for concern. Well, the worst part is that probably wasn't just subscribers. There was probably some other people who watched and like that makes it even worse that it was even less than 3% of our subscribers. So... Yeah. Next, we have Nicola Scott 1188. I love all the content here. I'm very recent to the hobby, started in November. I, and while law videos like Bricky's got me interested in Warhammer, it's videos like yours that got me hooked into the hobbying part. You've definitely helped me paint minis I'm proud to have on my shelf. We're really glad to hear that because that is our goal, to get people painting. It doesn't matter what level they're at. Just so long as people are painting because we think that it's very healthy and very good for you. Yeah, our whole aim is to help people with their hobby journey. So to hear this, it's it just makes us feel like we're hitting our target and the audience that we are looking for. Yeah. Next, we have Ginger Noob. I subbed before they came out, but the law versus design videos have been really interesting. Thank you. That is really good to hear because we have had some commenters tell us it's very unique and they've never seen such a discussion before. So it's great to hear you say that. Yeah, yeah. We've seen a lot of those comments. Next, we have Morton Christensen 5884. I like all of the videos. The most recent one, I did not get a notification and don't know why. My favorites are the reading of color and color theory. I would love to see a video where you explain how you decide positive, negative, dominant traits of colors. The way you explain things is amazing though, and all the pictures and examples are great. And I honestly just think keep up the work. For the part about the videos on how to decide positive, negative, dominant traits of colors, we've actually made a video on that already, which is um, uh, practical applications of color psychology. We actually go through like, okay, let's say you've got a combination of red, blue, yellow. What are the positive and negative traits? and which traits cancel out which other traits in these other two color combinations. And that's how you get the full color psychology from a particular set of color combinations. So you could go back and check that out. But I do understand that, you know, maybe you might have seen it, but it's one of our drier videos. So it is it is pretty dry uh, at one point where I think we were feeling it. Yeah, we're We're just like, and here's how this combination works. Yeah. So if you're really interested, you could give that video 
video a try. However, the way I read it was like, hey, you are the discoverers of color theory. Uh, no, we're not. Um, or color psychology, I should say. But we did not discover these traits. These traits were more discovered by other people, primarily marketing people. Yeah. But there are certain cultural aspects, like we were saying way, way back. And essentially, we just collated all of that information. Uh, color, I think it's called colorpsychology.com is a great oh, yeah, resource yeah, yeah 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 they had all the different types of colors on there and then they just have like a really well they good... didn't have all of the different type of colors because like they had like lots of some colors and then like certain colors they'd have none of and you know yeah i think that's just a list of some of the most popularly researched colors yeah and then we just went off of that and uh, amongst other research material as well yeah yeah i i remember never mind i i can't remember who exactly it was it's okay. Next question? Yeah. Okay. Oshiba Osmio1431 says, Your understanding color theory video is one of my most watched videos. After this, I looked some of your other videos with nearly the same topic. I like your style to teach things. I would love to see a video about how to put the color theory into practice without just following the original artwork. So yes, as mentioned in the previous comment, we have made a practical application of color theory or color psychology. It's quite a while back, so I'm not fully remembering the title of the video, but we'll put a little picture up. But that's the video you want to be watching. Yep, you know what, we'll, uh, we'll link that to him in the uh, reply. Yeah, okay. Next, we have Henry Bacon 672. Both color theory and design, it's very interesting. Thank you very much, and uh, you're going to see some more of it in the near future. Next, we have Nostalgia for Infinity 231. Will there be more of the Goblin story? And I'm going to say the exact same thing I said in the reply here, which is we do what's successful, and unfortunately that video wasn't very successful. So if things aren't doing very well in terms of the views, we're just going to take it as people aren't interested, so we won't continue with them. Yeah, but we really did enjoy making the Goblin story all those moons ago. Next we have This Duke. I was not a fan of the latest video. I think the problem was the format. I didn't like that it sounded like someone recorded a fight between two people. Also the topic was Okay, it's not the worst topic, but it's not the best either. As miniature painter, I don't care too much about Warhammer itself. And for the painting hobby, we have D&D as a gateway. That's more popular than every as well as 3D printing, lowering the barrier. Board game as a hobby is also extremely popular, so miniatures are not going anywhere, even if Games Workshop ones could potentially suffer. On the other hand, I love the channel so much that I re-enabled YouTube notifications that I would not miss your videos. Everything else has been great. I don't love the board discussion videos as much, though I really like the Valentine's Day one. All other topics are great and a mix of everything is excellent. So it was this comment along with another comment that made us decide we're not going to do this format again. Yeah, we were taking a risk with it. We It was intentional to make it sound a bit like an argument, but we can see that it didn't really resonate with people and we can get that. So we had a discussion about this and we decided that how people see us is kind of like the wholesome couple. Yeah, so we get that, you know, it's very different. You come on every weekend to expect this wholesome couple talk about your favorite hobby and then suddenly it's the wholesome couple have turned into fighting parents. Yeah, and... well, we, we sort of put it as like instead you just saw a domestic. Yeah. However, we do think that it's really important to talk about the health of the hobby and we think that Games Workshop is pretty core to that. Yeah, so we do agree that D&D is very popular, but I think people focus a lot more on gameplay with D&D than they do with the minis part of with it. With the hobbying part. Yeah, the yeah. hobbying part of it is very prominent with Warhammer type games. And so that's why we wanted to bring up the point that, you know, if they don't do well, you know, this particular part of the hobby is going to be affected pretty badly. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Next, we have Schmuck Martin. I think about verisimilitude every time. I work on my stuff because of you guys. I learned another word and I also learned of a way to approach my hobby. I like your videos. I hope views pick up for you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, so we it's comments like these that really help us keep going because when we hear stuff like this, we're like, 
okay, we're actually making a difference yeah, for people. Yeah, exactly. And that's what we want to do. We don't want to just get views. We actually want to help people. Like, if we were getting empty views and money, I think... Like, we... what's really the point? Like, we put yeah. in so much effort every week because we are hoping that we are adding value to you guys because that's yeah. what we hear in, in most of the positive commentary, which mm -hmm. is what actually motivates a person to continue doing. Well, at least it's what motivates us. Yeah. Next, we have Prismo4387, sub to help grow the community. More successful painting channels, the better. I hope you didn't just sub. I hope you're actually watching this stuff. <laughs> yeah, because if you don't watch the videos, that tanks the channel too. Mm. Next, we have Barth Marty 4394 I can only speak for myself. I'm having a hard time to spend consistent time at painting. Sometimes I just can't do anything after work. So between homeworking, building my house, working, building roof on others' house, gaming, walking the dog, painting, dreaming, gardening. Well, sometimes I quit something for a while, can't play any video games for a month, for example, so I can paint, vice versa. So those days are my Elden Ring days, approaching the end of the game but I'll come back. Finding time is always an issue. You sound just like us, my man. Yeah. But the thing is, it seems that you are very aware of how you spend your time because we can see that you're super busy, but you know, if you feel that something is taking up a lot of your time, you seem to just, okay, be aware of that and go, okay, I'm going to stop this and then I'm going to just focus on doing this other thing or else it will never get done. And it, Yeah, and it, that's that's yeah. important to us as well because we say it doesn't matter how you spend your time so long as you spend it purposefully. Yes, exactly. And it sounds like you're doing just that. Okay, I think that about covers it. Next comment. Venti Christopher says, I loved your videos on color theory and hyper reality and I feel like it fits a niche that the already nice miniatures community does not have at the moment. Videos that can be interpreted as criticism or whining about GW are 10 a penny. Everyone does them. I did not like today's video, but it was not exactly what I subscribed for. Thanks for all that you do. I love your work thus far. Constructive feedback like this is always helpful. Yes, because we want to know what we're doing wrong as well as what we're doing right so that it gives us the full picture on how we can further put a direction for the channel and you know figure out how we can fine-tune things better for you guys next we have rh vet your content is great but you need more of it looking at the last couple months longer videos yield more views i mean this is not as a derogative simply fact but because your content is essentially original audio with a visual slideshow it is in essence a youtubified podcast that's not a bad thing. In fact, a lot of successful channels in the hobby space work great there because it's something to put on and listen to while hobbying. Lean into that. Even if you have to scale back to every two weeks instead of weekly, doing a one hour deep dive on a subject will likely pay better dividends. Poor Hammer is a great channel to compare against for formatting, but don't feel remotely pressured to match their output unless you've also got a tame racing Brazilian to do the editing. Additionally, if you do go with shorter videos, 15 to 30 minutes, A, pick a time range and stick to it, and B, promote them with a community post linking them to a playlist of your videos on that larger subject. Consistently putting out 15 minute videos will please the algorithm better than 2 minute, then 10 minute, then 5 minute, then 45 minutes. Those different time investments attract watchers for different reasons. So the algorithm doesn't know who to push it to and link to a playlist so people can put your content and stay watching your stuff. Otherwise, if someone does the push play and listen while hobbying thing, they'll hear your videos once and then YouTube will guide them down a rabbit hole of other content creators instead. This comment was very frustrating because I agreed with a lot of it, but unfortunately there's not a lot that we can do when it comes to this unless we want to break our promises to you and we don't want to be those kinds of people. We want to be making content that doesn't, you know, waste your time, like we said, because there's a lot of yeah, videos... Yeah, we said we'll never waste your time. Yeah, there are lots of videos where you go, okay, show me how to do this thing, or I'm here because I want to hear about this topic, and they spend like five to eight minutes on fluff before they get into the actual thing. 
which we are frustrated about ourselves, so we don't do that. And that has resulted in, you know, inconsistent durations of our videos. And it's a bit of a rock and a hard place to choose one or the other. There was one other thing that was very frustrating to me because Sunny put so much effort into the visuals. And with a lot of it, a lot of people have said that, you know, the visuals really help them understand. But unfortunately, I think he's right. But there's a certain demographic who just want to sort of listen to this in the background. Yeah, I mean, like, we definitely fall into that demographic ourselves because when we're hobbying, we're not looking at the TV. You know, we just want to have something run in the background. But when it comes to actual more technical things, we do really want that visual intensity. Yeah. And often we don't get that. So once again, we feel like a rock in a hard place. Exactly. So once again, nothing wrong with what you said. It's totally correct. It's just that we don't know how to make these changes actionable without breaking fundamentally who we are. I would say that's time for the next question then. Yes. So another comment from the same guy. Also, regarding weird YouTube algorithm stuff, remember to uncheck the notify subscribers button when uploading shorts. He's included the video link. And we have seen this Yeah, video. we actually saw it a long time ago. Yeah. yeah, and as soon as Cal saw it, he was like, he rushed out of the room and came straight to the computer. And he was like, we got to do this thing. And I was like, what? what's the thing? What's the thing? And he showed me the video and I was like, oh my God. And we tried it. And guess what happened? 10% <laughs> of what we usually get. So we'll usually get a couple of thousand or a couple of hundred on a video. And it went down to just a couple of views yeah like or one ten, digit yeah or tens of views and we're like uh this isn't working the way the magic man said maybe maybe we're not considering certain other factors i'm not yeah, sure but, but yeah it like didn't that, work that out didn't for work us. at all for us yeah. not even close youtube debunks well, I don't think that guy was lying or anything. Yeah, no, I think yeah. I think it might have been true at the time. I don't know why it is, but I think because it became so popular, I think YouTube changed the algorithm because of that. That could be true. That happens sometimes too. But I feel like if that was the case, YouTube would have taken down the video as no, well. No, no, they would not. They would have left it up because they want the algorithm to be mysterious. That's their whole ah, goal with it. Ah, okay. All right, I think it's time for the next question. Paolo Garcis8520 says, interested with the Aussie accent initially and stayed for the quality content. <laughs> thank, now thank you, you know I guess. why I married Cal. Oh. I was swayed by his Australian accent. Oh, okay. And I this guess is that why. was it. All right. This is why. <sighs> next question. Sacrifus. I think. Color theory design, even tutorials. I'm all for it. I feel you are quite alone in the space of theory and design, so please keep at it. Really like the discussions around mini painting that also could apply to arts in general and not just plastics. So that part is great. On the last video, the state of GW in Australia, not that interested. The format of two people fighting, not always what you want at the end of a hard day. I started watching it, but fell out, fell off because the mood and vibe was just a bit sad. Sorry. Yeah, and this was the other comment that made us decide we don't want to make content that will deliberately upset people. And that's what it seemed to do with just a small portion of the audience, at least. And we're like, that's not our goal. Our goal is not to deliberately upset. Yeah, it seems that you guys really just are here for the wholesome vibes. Yeah, and yeah. And like, that's fine. That's yeah, fine. Yeah, I mean, of course, we want to be there. You know, we don't want to be the angry channel. Yes. No, there's there's lots of angry people on the internet. Yes, there's more than <laughs> enough of them. But it was more like we saw that some people were upset by it and we never deliberately want to go out of our way to upset and hurt people. That's never our goal. It was a risk. It's a one-time thing. We're not going to do it again. Yeah, well, we were hoping that it would help get the point across and it would help illustrate things with like how we use our visuals. but it obviously didn't translate. But it wasn't actually about Australia. It was about Australia and Europe because those are the people who we have been talking to. And a lot of people brought this up to us, especially in our community. 
and we had when we had more personal deeper chats this was something that came up a lot which is why we thought you guys probably would have a similar thoughts or thoughts around this topic and you know bring about discussion on it but clearly it didn't do that well i think that for some people they were like yeah 100% but i think for other people they didn't have that experience at all and i think that there's a big shift between america and europe and australia and i want to figure out what that is based off the comments i see in that video but that's a topic for another time next we have garrett van den bosch 4681 and he says i haven't been motivated by your last few thumbnails i can't remember why i subscribed but you must be worth watching Sometimes the algorithm can screw you too. Well, unfortunately, when it comes to the thumbnails, it seems that there's always a critic. Yeah, well, there's always a criticism about something. Yeah, yeah, but like, I, I just don't see how we can sort of get the thumbnails right. It seems like if we use the AI stuff, some people are upset. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, if we use just other people's stuff, which is relevant to the topic, they're like, that's not yours, and it's just like, and then we it's do actual really ones like we did the meme one with the... Like the wash video. Yeah, we had a meme with the wash video, and we set it up, and we did our own photography, and we got almost no views on that one, and some of the times when we present our own art, art that we paid for, and it's like, yeah, you're not going to get any views, and it's like, oh, okay, cool, I guess. So figuring out thumbnails has always been a problem for yeah, us. Yeah. Next we have Derek Smith 8354. I got recommended to your content from another YouTuber. Love the color theory, psychology, and design aspects you bring to the table. Yeah, and I think uh, when I followed that up, it was from the Poor Hammer podcast video. Yeah. And we've done a reply to them, and we hope that we have at least gotten them some in return. Next from Mef3676. I liked your new video. It randomly popped up on my timeline and it was what made me subscribe. Think I had seen a color theory video of yours before, but it was on a playlist and did not subscribe as I was painting and never came across the channel again. So don't see it as a failure. It just did not connect with everyone. I thought it was a great community piece to get people thinking and talking and the algorithm did put it outside the normal range. And see, this once again is the whole issue of some people like this sort of thing and other people like other sorts of things. And like he said, he had that on a playlist and that's why he didn't subscribe before. So like, unfortunately, what that other guy said mm. and, and like we feel like some of the times we're twisted in the wind because yeah. we have... Uh, two people saying very different things. Mm, exactly, which makes it difficult for us to make things actionable. And see, the thing is, two things can be true at once. This is true for that guy, and it's true for the other guy, and I don't think either of them are trying to misinform us, which is really hard because we feel that both of them are sincere. Yeah, and both of them have valid points. Yeah. All right, next comment, but it looks like a long one. So we have Jose F. Minkoff. You are not doing anything wrong. The YouTube algorithm is built the way it's built and nobody really knows how it pushes videos. To make matters worse, the YouTube analytics page seems to be designed to give maximum anxiety. If there was a sure way to have successful videos every time, we would all be doing it. Best you can do is make stuff that you want to share with the world rather than sharing what you think others want from you. One's a much simply psychological exercise and the plus side is the passion will show in your vids. I mostly receive shorts in my feed from you guys, so keeping that going to advertise your main videos or to have shorter tips and tricks. So on the YouTube side, I know that it's going to really sound um, uh, antithetical, but I am giving the benefit of the doubt to YouTube in that I don't think it's designed to maximize anxiety. I think that information is designed to maximize productivity. And when you're sort of struggling and you see all of this information and it's like, this is how you be productive and you can't understand it, that's what causes anxiety. Yeah, because people are doing this, like the whole reason of looking at analytics is to see what can be improved and how to reach more people with the views that you get. And that's what people are trying to do, right? Improve yeah. by using the information of the analytics. And like Hal said, the anxiety comes from not knowing what to do with the information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And on the other part of just do what you want to do, unfortunately, that just doesn't work because we started out being a review channel. We were happy with that. But then when we tried to reach outside of that, 
we found that, like we said, doing the reviews actually brought us down, so we had to gate that and put it into another channel. Plus, we have done topics that we really like, like the Frostgrave ones. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Every time we do a topic that we like, it has not bode well for well, us. Well, we like most of our topics, so but I think it's the ones when we're really passionate about this thing and we're like, all right, how can we sell this more niche idea? And people are like, idea is super niche. We know what. Thanks. <laughs> At least the algorithm thinks so. Essentially, we don't want our work to go to waste. Yes, we don't want our effort to go to waste. And for me, it's very upsetting because Sunny is the person who primarily works on the videos and the videos are the part which has more work. And as a husband, it's really hard to see your wife put so much effort into something and then it just flops. Hmm. And as a wife, it's also very saddening for me to see my husband uh, stressing out over trying to find solutions that may not exist to try and push the video out. Yeah, and that's when things really fail is what you're talking about, mm. like the 300 views. Like, usually we're just like, all right, this one wasn't a hit. But when it's down like that and you put that much effort it, in, yeah, I'm just like, like oh. However, I think we've spent long enough on this question. I think we should move on. So we have Giltos Draconis who says, you must have done something on the old world I liked. Yeah, yeah, we did. Uh, what is the old world? And I think oh, that's... Oh, no, it's the what is old hammer Oh, video. that's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah, what is old hammer? And we talked about how much we loved the idea of making your own terrain and doing that sort of oh, thing. Oh, yeah, it was, like, super crafty. And I think it was partially also a topic about how I got into the hobby or why do you think Old Hammer works Is, better than... Yeah, it was more appealing for, like, ladies and or, stuff. Or, or people who are new to the hobby. Yeah, because yeah. Because it's... It, it, it really is great because you just make things yourself, your terrain, your models. But I think it was more like that ladies like the arts and crafts yeah. and like that was like, oh, it's art attack. It is art attack. And it's so simple and effective, some of the things we saw them make. And I was just like, yeah, you know, kids can get into that really yeah, easy. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. And yeah. Next, we have Waffle Habit. I found you because of another channel. I'm currently in school, so Warhammer is on the back burner. Hoping to paint sometime this year. And I think that was Old Hammer again. But when we actually looked at the analytics, I don't think that we got a lot of subscribers from the Poor Hammer podcast. But what I think we did get is a lot of passionate subscribers. So when it comes to your subscribers, you're going to have a lot of people who are sort of like, maybe in 100, you're going to have 10 that are super passionate. Yeah, that, that is true. So next question. We have Sergeant Tady. Subbed due to your more interesting topics, I actually get bored with Warhammer-centric painting channels, rather preferring the ones that paint interesting and varied models. Meanwhile, your channel went beyond the how to paint a insert current GW mini here bubble to talk about the psychology of color choices. The concept when kit bashing or painting to help define the mini's identity on the table, etc. So Sergeant Taddy is one of our most active fans. We see him on most of our podcasts on the Waypan Reviews, and that's a great place to catch us and talk to us live yeah so we actually invite most of the community members from the facebook page to join us on the review live and they can share their opinions yeah on top of our opinion so it's more of a discussion it's not just two people sharing and imposing their thoughts on everyone else's work it's like everybody has something to say something to share yeah and what i liked about it is we were talking with one of our members and what we don't have is we don't have toxic positivity we're not like oh everything's so beautiful we we talk about how things could be improved and i think that's probably why we have him because we talk about different things and we talk about them in depth yeah and he always has something to add to the conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're very happy to have him as one of our subscribers, one of our passionate members. But we can't say too much or it'll get to his head. So uh, next <laughs> question. <laughs> next, we have Pat the Pirate. I didn't have the notification. I tried to watch every video you do. I like your overall chemistry. Usually I listen in Friday or Sunday in car. <laughs> I like the way that you said it, though. You know, the uh, Ugandan knuckles. Do you know the way? Do you know the way? You are not the queen. 
A tweet. All right, who's next? War dude pro. Oh wow, I really liked the more academic breakdown of miniature painting, and really was reminded of when I went to art school. But fun. I just continued to really enjoy your take on things, and really enjoyed your last video. The algorithm is hard to satisfy, from what I hear, from most people I'm subscribed to. And sometimes a video may end up a bust due to no fault of yours. Really, it seems engagement with the audience helps. One YouTuber I follow hides a cropped photo of a person somewhere in his videos, and people who may not want to talk about a subject but just listen in may be more in inclined to comment the time of the hidden photo. Maybe a game of finding the hidden mini, something that allows you to do what you want and adds a little audience participation in a way. I think that that little game could add something, but I'm not sure that that will fix our core problem as it stands. Yeah, the issue is more of getting people to view it in the first place. Yeah, it seems that when people view it, they they like most of our content, but it seems like actually getting people to click is our biggest issue. Our final comment is from Roman GL nine zero seven zero. I really like that you are covering foundations of the hobby, theory of color, and the like. It is something I am going to watch surely halfway there. But I tend to gravitate towards lighter topics when I am looking to pass the time. Even though you have a great chemistry as a show host, no matter what the topic. Just my two cents. So just translating, I think what he's saying is, I like the technical stuff, but some of the times I'm just looking for lighter topics. Yeah, well, don't we cover lighter topics? Yeah, I think he's saying that, like, some of the times I want this and some of the times I want yeah, that. Yeah, people always want something different for the time that, you know, it's a mood thing. Yeah, 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 and we totally get that. But I think that's what a lot of people like about us. They like the sort of back and forth. They like that we do have chemistry. And there's also a variety of things that we talk about. Yeah, well, for some people, they'd like us to be more focused on certain things as mm. we've seen yes. in this poll. But yeah, let's bring that poll back up. So we're going to try and use this information to guide us as to what you guys want in the future. Yes, and I think you guys pretty much want more color theory videos. Yes, it does look that way. Uh, in general, just things like uh, simple tips and tricks, uh, you know, when we cover like how to do better painting minis and things like well, that. Well, I don't think it's simple. I think it's the more broad design stuff. Yeah, so I, I think just things like that, things that are a bit on the educational side. And we do have a broad design for you coming up in just a couple of days. Yeah, and we hope you'll like it. But we have formulated some ideas which are specifically related to color theory. And we're actually going to be talking about the Stormcast Eternal and Ooh. the worst decision that uh, Games Workshop has Design ever made. Design decision. To yeah, specific, and yeah. it's about color psychology. Yes, and we hope that one will resonate with you guys as well. Yeah, and uh, it's not because we're trying to rag on them. It's more we're just talking about color psychology and where. Yeah, and the design. And, you know, because the design versus law is also kind of taking a look at it objectively and it's like, can it be improved? Can it be not improved? Or does it even need an improvement? Yeah. Things like that. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. If you want us to do more out there things, please become a member. Becoming a member makes us feel safer making content on YouTube. Yes, it makes, it tells us that our efforts will not go to waste, especially if we cover something that might be a little bit risky. Yeah, a little bit more niche. And of course, if you subscribe at the higher tier, you will get STLs of our own minis for our own game. And you're going to get more exclusive information about that. Yes. If you're an Australian who is interested in getting commissions, please check out Calidos.com. Yeah, I can do international stuff, but postage might be a bit of a killer. Yeah, we've had issues with uh, certain taxes and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, so unfortunately, some of the times that can be an issue, but I'm happy to serve. Finally, if the Waypan review stuff interests you, please check out the Facebook group link in the description below. In fact, we have this link in every single one of our videos. Yes, we do. And uh, we know that Facebook isn't great. We don't like Facebook, but unfortunately, Facebook is the best... Best of all the worst options. Yeah, it's the best vehicle we have to do this in this way. All right, say it with us now. Keep, Keep those, those brushes, brushes wet. Bye-bye.
Oh wait, you didn't cover um. Uh, could you cover some membership so we're not poor? 